that you be glorified this morning. It's in your name I pray. Amen. 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 I told you I'm going to be moving quick. I think uh, Taylor May already had some of that up on the screen. Uh, I'm not going to ask you to flip through your Bibles this morning to every scripture. I'm, I'm going to be all over the place. And I ain't got time because I'll be fumbling all around trying to hunt something. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Come on, help me right there. Amen. So I'm going to be moving. Amen. But I encourage you, if you got a pen, I mean, just take a few notes along the way because you ain't going to be able to keep up as fast as I'm going to try to move this morning. Oh, okay. But you need to look at your neighbor right quick. Go on and lean over and look at somebody and say, I need to know God's will for my life. Amen. I want to know. You may not want to know, but I want to know, brother and sister, what God's will is for my life. Amen. The grass withers and the flower will fade away. Amen. But the word of God. It's going to last and stand forever. Amen. So go on to that same neighbor you've been talking to. If you ain't looking at them and they ain't saying nothing, look at somebody else. That might be the wrong neighbor. You might even have to turn around and look. Tell them, Brother Frank, you need your prayers. I need all your amens. I need all your shouts. I need y'all on my back. You're like riding the bull. Just spur me along. We're going to get through this real quick. Amen. 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 How many of y'all, let me start by asking this question. How many of y'all know how important it is to know God's will for your life? How many of y'all? How many of y'all? Amen. And, and, and I'm going to try my best to get through and finish and close this message up today. And God nudges me to move on a little bit deeper into it next week. I will. But I'm going to try my best to, to finish this up. But I want, to, I want to come before you this morning and tell you, you can know. And I'm going to tell you how you can know God's will for your life. And so I'm going to go ahead and say this one more time. But for the ones... I ain't going to call you heathens and backsliders again, amen? But for the ones that wasn't here for the first part of the message, I'm just kidding, y'all. Don't get mad at the preacher, amen? And just, I'm just aggravating you a little bit before we get started. I want to bring you up to part one, what I said. I'm just going to briefly and quickly review this so I can move, amen? So y'all remember, some of y'all remember, I talked about the fact prior to getting the big box screen TV that we had in our house, the first one we got, I used to have a little TV, amen? And most of y'all was that way. Before you got the big 65, hey. amen, you probably had a 13 black and white with a little channel on it, amen. Yeah. And when you had that TV, it seemed fine, amen. It done what you wanted to do. You could watch what you wanted to watch on TV. But it, it seemed fine, but you didn't realize how much you was missing until you bought that TV, amen. When you got a big TV, you're like, whoa, I can see a whole lot. It's fabulous. It's fantastic. It's even fun to sit in here and watch this big screen, amen. I can see some stuff. If I got a witness, amen. amen. Some of y'all like watching the big screen, amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. amen. All right. Somebody's going to get with me here in a little while, amen. But, but, but look, in many ways, in, in, in some, in many ways, amen, God has a big screen TV for your life. Yeah. God has a big screen for you, yeah. but, but you become satisfied with a little screen. Yeah. Right. Amen. You don't want what God has for you. Come on, I ain't gonna get no help, but it's okay, I amen. Mean, God has big plans in store for you, I amen. Mean, a huge HD TV, a big widescreen 1080p, maybe even an 8K line, I amen, mean, anointed line, but you come content. You don't even care, I amen. Mean, you just satisfied with a little screen line that you have. I know, I know, I need to, I, I look, you just get content with that small screen. Yeah. And I'm gonna need some witnesses right to help me, I amen. Mean. But what we got to do, if we want to be in the center of God's will, I mean, I don't know what y'all want this morning, but I want to be in God's will. Amen. 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 Where are you at in your life today? Are you in God's will? Are you seeking his will? I mean, I want to be, and I said this the week before, I mean, I want to be in the perfect will of God. I mean, I want to be right downtown. I want to be Main Street. I want to be up front. I mean, I don't want to be out to the corner on the side street. I want to be right downtown. I mean, not just in the vicinity. I want to be right there. I Your bodies 
is a living sacrifice. Amen. Yeah. That was one requirement. Amen. Yeah. The first part, brothers and sisters, of knowing God's will is, is you have to present yourself as a living sacrifice to God. If you ain't presented yourself and give your life to Jesus Christ, you'll never understand what his will is for your life. Somebody shout, I got a sacrifice. Amen. Sacrifice. Amen. A living sacrifice. It's not about what you want. And that's been hard for me for many years. Amen. It's not about what you want. It's about what God wants for your life. Amen. It's not about doing what you want. It's about doing what God's way. It ain't about making yourself happy. I mean, I'm telling you, if you find the Lord Jesus Christ and he chose up in your life, you're going to be happy. You ain't got to search for happiness. Amen. Amen. Yes. How many of y'all, how many of y'all know that you made some bad, some wrong decisions along the way? Amen. If you can slip your hand if you want to yeah. or not, I mean, I'm going to raise both of mine. Amen. Amen. Woo. Yes. I know. And if you, if you didn't say nothing, you ain't got to say nothing to this YouTube. Amen. Amen. And me. It's all of us. Amen. It's all of us. I ain't got to say that. I know. I know where some of y'all been. Amen. Yeah. Woo. But it ain't about where we've been. It's where we're Amen. Right now. Amen. 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 That's a word for somebody right there. Don't worry about that. Just worry about what, what right. right here today and going forward. Amen. Yeah. God wants you to be in the center of his will. He wants you right there. Amen. But it begins by us being a living sacrifice, I told you. That was number one. Number two, be not conformed to this world. And I told you. I got to touch on it again. We have a big problem of being conformed to this world. We want to do, all of us want to do everything the world does. Yeah. I got two, three. I mean, but y'all, I want to know everybody. And all, we all want to do what the world does. I mean, we want to be caught up and stay up with the Joneses. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> we want to be caught up with what the world's doing. Amen. But let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. It's hard to be in the will of God. Amen. Why are you trying to keep up with what the world's doing? That's right. I'm telling you, you it's hard to be in his will. I mean, you got to, you got to, he says, come out from among them and be separate. Amen. I need a Bible reading. Hey. Right? We're supposed to be different. Amen. That's right. The world is doing everything opposite of God. Yeah. You don't believe it, just look around outside. Amen. Yeah. You ain't got to look for it. Amen. The world is doing everything that's against what God says. Amen. Amen. Doing things outside God's will. Amen. That ain't God's will. Amen. They're doing things that the Bible says that you shouldn't do. Oh, I said something right there. What the Bible says, baby. That's our foundation, baby. That's what they're doing, though. And if you get outside of the will of God, I mean, you're going to slide away from ever seeing the will of God for your life. If you follow the world, I mean, have I got a witness? I mean, the world decided they want to do some crazy jacked up stuff, I mean, and punch up and punch in and all and put all, look. I done seen it everywhere I go, amen. Don't get me wrong, because I'm going somewhere and I don't, don't think I'm throwing rocks, amen. But look, they, 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 I see these folks out there, amen, with all these piercings all over there. It gets on my nerves, amen. I just got to talk about it, amen. They got them in the eyelid, they got them in the nose, they got them in the mouth, they got them in the lip, amen. They got them in the tongue, they got them in the navel button, amen. They got them everywhere. They some place I don't even want to know who you got them at, amen. I'm scared to look where you got them, amen. amen. I heard somebody say one time, some folk walk around like they fell face first in a tackle box and stood back up. Amen. 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 I'm just trying to make a point. Amen. If you got a piercing or something, look, I had one a long time ago when I was wild and crazy like some of y'all still are. Amen. I had one. Amen. I, I got sick and I took that thing out and it bothered me too much. Amen. Amen. But if you try to keep up with the things of the world, amen, that is not God's will. It is not God's will. That's the world's way. Amen. Amen. If the world, the whole world decided they wanted to tattoo the body from the toes all the way up to the top of their head, amen. If the world decided, come on, help me somebody. They want to do that all over. If you want to keep up with that, amen, you're going to be outside of God's will because God ain't got nothing to do with that. Now, now, go ahead, Pastor, preach on right there, amen. amen. I'm, I'm trying to do the best I can, but y'all ain't saying nothing right now, amen. amen. And I ain't expecting a whole lot of amens, amen. I know y'all don't like this kind of preaching. I'm not throwing rocks. I'm just trying to make some points. Because we all, including your pastor, we got some world on us, amen. And if you ain't got world on you, you got some world living on the inside of you, amen. Right. I'm just trying amen. to make a point. Amen, praise We know some crazy stuff. We all done. We still crazy sometimes, amen. We've all done some stuff, amen. Hey. Come on, help me somebody yeah. talk right here, amen. We've done some stuff. The world, amen. We don't want to keep up with the world, amen. They want to party all the time. They still want to go to the club, amen. Oh, if they don't do it, they want to. Come on, help me right here. You want to most of the time keep up with what the world's doing. I 
that's what we do. I mean, I'm just telling you, that's what we do. And I made up my mind. I made a lot of choices, amen. I've had body pierces. I still got tattoos that mark my body. Don't get nervous, amen. I'm just telling you the truth. I'm being real with you, amen. Your pastor has tattoos on you. You probably won't ever get to see them, amen. But I ain't taking that much off in front of you, amen. But I am not. I have made up my mind. I am not going to try to keep up with what the world's doing. That's right. Even though I made some, some dumb, cho dumb choices and made some mistakes in my life and things I probably shouldn't have done, look, it ain't an unpardonable sin. Amen. Come on, help me somebody. I'm asking forgiveness of the things I've done. Amen. But That's I'm right. not going to let the world dictate my choices. Amen. Amen. Right. And you cannot let the world dictate your choices, brothers and sisters. So, don't be conformed to this world. That was point number two. Well, I don't know. Yeah. But he said, I had a number three point last the week for last. I mean, he said, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. By the transformed by the renovation of your mind. Maybe it's like we do it on that club. We tear out stuff in the middle, we put new stuff in. That's, That's some stuff in your mind. You gotta tear out and put right. some new hey, stuff man. in. Amen. Right. That's yeah. what renewing means. I mean, you gotta get out with the old and get in with the new. I mean, it. That's renewing of your mind. It means to have a renovation of your mind. Amen. In other words, you got to think differently. You got to yeah. think differently. Amen. Yeah. You got to look at things differently. The, the scripture is clear, brothers and sisters. I mean, the only way you don't see it because you don't want to look for it. Amen. Amen. God don't think like we think. I mean, we're not on that level. I mean, He says as far as the east is from the west, I can't understand how far that is. I mean, Amen. as far as the north is from the south, God don't think like we think. Amen. God. He don't even operate like we operate. Thank God he don't. Amen. And if you want to be in God's will, you got to learn to think opposite of the way the world thinks. Yeah. Yeah. you got to be different now. Amen. I ain't saying we don't have some world in us and we don't have to. We do live in the world, but we shouldn't be conformed to do it the world's way all the time. Amen. Amen. It's important. This is important because what I'm going to give you today, i got a few points today, but some of y'all, they're going to be kind of strange. You may not quite understand. And there's probably some people in here that ain't, ain't going to like what I got to say. Amen. And I know probably some of y'all ain't like what I said already. Amen. But look, let me tell you something right quick. I'm not trying to be your friend right now. I'm not trying to be your friend right now. Brother Frank, he's trying to be your pastor. I'm trying to be your amen. pastor right now. I'm going to be your best friend when we say amen and this service close. Amen. But right now, God's told me to be your pastor. Amen. And that's hard for me right. sometimes. Amen. Let's go to the text, amen. Proverbs chapter number three. Proverbs, amen. Let me, let me start off with setting the stage for this point I want to make. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter number three, verses five and number six is where I'm going to be to start with. He says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not, into your own to, uh, lean not on your own understanding. And I think I'll have a couple of witnesses right here today that going to help me. They, some of us, some people learn to lead, lean on their own understanding. Yeah. Amen. We learn to lean on our own understanding, not God's understanding. Amen. And it's got ourselves, you, me, all of us, into some trouble. But lean not, the Bible says, amen, on your own understanding. Yeah. Don't go about what you understand. Amen. Don't go about what your understanding is. Amen. And watch this. Verse number six says, and he, he says right here, in all your ways, not some of them, in all your ways, acknowledge him. And oh, I love this right here. This is one of my favorites. I say it all the time. I got a bunch of them, amen. But he shall direct your paths, amen, amen. when you lean on him. You acknowledge him, and I promise you, he will direct amen. your path. Hey, I'm going to get happy all by myself. I ain't got to say that, amen. Acknowledge him. Seek him. And he'll order the steps of your life along yeah. the way, amen. You ain't got to yeah. do nothing. He'll just yeah. direct your paths, amen. He just leads you on the way. Yes. And brothers and sisters, that's where it starts. It starts off, you want to know God's will for your life, it starts right there by acknowledging Him. You've got to come to a place where you acknowledge the living God, amen, and then you can watch Him direct your path if you get on board, amen. amen. Yes. And so, having said that, having said that, i got to give you a few things right quick. We're going to get out of here and go hunt something to eat, amen. Yes. Number one, look at Psalm 119. Psalm 119. Can you find it? Tell you, throw it up on the screen if you find Psalm 119. I mean, you probably couldn't even uh, uh, read, read my right. I mean, I put it back there. Let me read it to you. Your word. Whew, I like this. I mean, verse 105 of Psalm 119. Your word. Listen to me, brothers and sisters. Is a lamp to my feet. Your word. You want to know where to go? Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. He's telling us right here, if you want your path to be lit, 
lit. Go ahead, Pastor. Lit right there. Lit. Let's get lit. It's going, amen. Somebody say it's going to get lit up in here. Amen. It's lit. It's lit. You want your, that's a young people term, amen. They like to get lit. You know, I'll just get all happy and everything, amen. You want your pants to be lit. You want God to order your steps and direct your pants. He says right here, his word. His word is the first place you got to go, amen. His word. So that's number one. Watch this spiritual direction. Spiritual direction is number one. In the scriptures. That's where you got to be, amen. You got to go to the scriptures. Yeah. If you want to make a decision, if you want to know what God's will is for your life, I mean, you go to the scriptures, look at the word, amen, and find out what God in the word has to say about that, amen, for the situation that you're going to face, amen, because it's all in there, amen. The Bible has got some principles, it's got some guidelines, and it speaks on it or to it in some kind of way, amen. And the problem is with us, brothers and sisters, that we don't even go to the word. We don't even look what God has to say about it. We don't search the scriptures. I mean, we don't ever look nothing up. I mean, we just think we got it all figured out. I mean, and look, you got to find out what the word has to say about it. You got to find out what the scripture, y'all ain't saying nothing. I mean, but the word has something to say about whatever you're thinking about. And here it is. Watch this. I mean, if you want to do it, if you want to be in God's will, I mean, you got to find out what he has to say about it. I mean, and if you, and if you go by what his word says, but uh, you'll be all right. But if you go opposite of his word, you can be guaranteed. I can tell you right now, if you go against what God says, I can promise you right now, standing right here, amen, black-footed, you'll be outside the will of God. Yeah. If you go against yeah. his word, amen. amen. So the scripture says, right here, the scripture says, the word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path, amen. Somebody gonna get with me here. And look, he'll light up my course. I mean, he'll show me where he wants you to go. And look, he'll give me a sense of direction. I mean, he'll tell you what he wants you to do. He'll illuminate. He'll brighten it up. I mean, which way you're supposed to go. Somebody ought to be talking right here. What did the word say about what you're trying to do or what you want to do? I mean, we should go to the world. We, I mean, the word, we should build our lives around God's word. I mean, we talk about it. I mean, we ought to talk about it all the time. I mean, you can try it. And they try all the time, they try to diminish it and say, oh, it's just man's word. That ain't no living word. I mean, but the bottom line is, this thing has been ordered. My steps have been since I've took to my own senses and accepted him as the Lord of my life. And it's made a difference in the way I live. It's made a difference in the joy of my life. It's made a difference in the way I walk. It's made a difference in the direction of my life. Yeah. Yeah. I testify about that all the time. That's another story. I mean, but I didn't want yeah. to change. God changed me. That's enough proof for me, amen. I yes. ain't had no sense enough to change, amen, yes. God showed up in my life. Yes. It speaks life to us, and it gives us direction. Right. His word speaks life to you, brothers and sisters, and it always gives you the right direction. Here's number two. I'm moving, amen. Hebrews chapter number 13. Hebrews chapter number 13 and verse number 17. Let me read this one right quick. Obey those. <laughs> they don't have problems right, right here. Right, right. Obey those who rule over you. Yeah. And be submissive. For they watch out for your soul. Yeah. Whew, says those who must give an account. That's right. Oh my. Oh my. Yeah. It gets even room. It gets a little deeper. Let them do so with joy and not with grief. Yeah. And let that that would be unprofitable for you. Yeah. I'm gonna slide up. I don't know if I put this in there or not, Taylor, but I'm gonna slide up to verse number seven, same chapter. Because we might well read it too. It says, remember those who rule over you, who have spoken the word of God to you. Yeah. Now, whose faith follow, consider the end or of their conversation. I don't know which one you're reading out of. King James says, amen. I mean, maybe I'm wrong right here. Is that King James first? I don't know. But it says, yeah. speaking of you, I mean, of, of the outcome of their conduct or consider the end of their conversation. Yeah. Yes, King James, amen. I got my words tied up right here. This speaking, brothers and sisters, stay with me right through here. Speaking of you being submitted to the authorities of your life. Yeah. I know y'all ain't gonna like some of this. I mean, y'all can be quiet. I hear crickets chirping up here already. Amen. Yeah. You gotta listen to what people's telling you. You gotta listen. You gotta listen. I said you gotta listen, brothers and sisters. You gotta listen to the authorities in your life. Somebody shout authorities. Authorities, authorities. This is this this is big. This is huge. This is a, a profound thing I want to share with you. Watch this. I got to pull over just for a minute, but I promise you, I'm gonna got the motor running and my foot's on the gas and it's already in drive. Amen. I'm gonna move. Hey. But God speaks to us 
through authorities. He speaks to us through other people, authorities in our life. God places everybody under somebody's authority. Let me say it again. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I mean, I said God places everybody under somebody's authority. Yeah. Here, here, here it is. Here it is. Here it is. If you can't tell in, nobody anything, amen, if you can't listen and let somebody give you a sense of direction, if you don't have no authorities in your life, you're not in the will of God. I'm just telling you, you're not in the will of God if you won't listen to nobody. God raises up authorities to give you a sense of direction, and God controls their heart. Watch this. I ain't got time to go there, but jot down uh, Proverbs chapter number 21 and verse number 1. I ain't, ain't going to get there, amen, but, but, but this is another one of my favorites. But when I think about the authorities in my life, amen, the, the Bible says, Proverbs 21 1 says, The king's heart is in the hands of the Lord. But, right. but pay attention to that. The king's heart is in the hands of the Lord. The person who's in a position of authority, God controls their heart. Right. What the Bible's telling us, amen. And here's what I know. I'm going to tell you what I know. I know if God knows, listen to me carefully right here. If God knows that I'm going to abide by that principle in my life, that I'm going to look to my authorities. Come on, help me right here. It's going to give me a sense of direction in my life. If I'm going to do that, if I'm going to stand true to that and look to my authorities, I know that God, if he knows I'm going to do that, amen, I believe he'll control the heart according to what the scripture says, of the people in authority over me. I believe it. I believe it. Now, if you feel so strongly, brothers and sisters, about something you want to do, but your authorities are not in line with it, that means it's time for you to wait. Because God has assigned some people in your life to speak authority into your life. But some of y'all, God help you. Don't, don't look at nobody. Amen. Don't look, some of y'all just right off the bat, amen, just right off the bat, amen, don't want to do anything that nobody says. Say that, say that quiet your heart, amen. Even without hearing what somebody's heart might be about a situation that you're about to get in. And I believe it's critical right here. I got to say that I believe it's critical to say to my young people in here, especially my young people, amen. Where my young people at? I got some young people that ain't going to holler back at me, amen. I got some young people. Yeah. They ain't saying that. Where my young people at? My young couples, where y'all at? Amen. Somebody don't be saying something, amen. Look, some of y'all, some of y'all my young people, some of y'all are messing up your life because can't nobody tell you nothing. Oh, yeah. oh, oh. Ain't nobody can't tell you nothing, amen. You don't listen to nothing, amen. And you, and you think your parents, come on, well, I'm going to get in trouble right here. You think the authorities in your life are trying to ruin your life, amen. The mom and dad, they just don't understand they pray. They ain't got no sense. They mean they ain't got no. They don't know nothing. Look, your mom and daddy or your authorities in your life. They're not trying to ruin your life. They mean they just trying to keep you from making the same mistake that they already done made. They mean they're trying to keep you from going down the same road that they done been down. They mean listen to the people that speaks authority in your life. So those verses that I give you right here are speaking specifically, Amen, to spiritual authorities. Woo, even to your pastor, amen. You need to listen to him, amen. Yes. Got four, amen. Look at your neighbor and say, he's such a god, man. <laughs> Go ahead and look at your neighbor and say, I love my pastor. God, uh, Woo, don't lie in church, amen. We're not trying to ruin your life, amen. We're just trying not to, I mean, I ain't even want to steal none of your joy. I want you to have Amen. I want you to have that peace in your life. I want you to be successful and win. We're just trying to keep you from making some mistakes we made. Amen. Come on, holler back. You're right. That's the preacher. Amen. The scripture says, obey those who have rule over you. Submit to the authority. Amen. Yeah. Hebrews 13 and verse number 7 says, for they watch out for your souls. Trying to watch out for your soul. Those and this scared me. Scared me to death, amen. For those who must give an account. Mm -hmm. now, everything I tell you, brothers and sisters, I was talking to Tina about it this morning. Everything I tell you that comes across this pulpit right here, amen, I got an answer for it. That's right. I got an answer for it, amen. I've got to have a biblical foundation for telling you everything I tell you because 
One day, God's going to hold me accountable, amen. He's going to ask me about some things. Amen. And I think y'all know me pretty good. I'm preaching on the Bible, amen. amen. And if it's my opinion, I'm going to tell you. It's Brother Frankie's opinion. Back years ago, I would have preached my opinion. But right now, in my life, I'm going to tell you, thus saith the Lord, amen. I'm going to preach the Bible, amen. And if I don't interpret it right, amen, I'm just telling you like the way I understand it, amen. 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 All right. I want to give you guidance. I want to give you direction in your life. I want you to understand some things. But I want you to do it with his word, just like I'm doing it with his word. Amen. Amen. The scripture says, let them do so with joy. Yeah. Let them do so with joy and not with grief. Mm -hmm. Not with grief. And stay with me. I know this is kind of, this is a down moment in the message. Amen. But I got to teach you something right here. Here's what's grief. I got to say this. Being your pastor this morning. Here's what brings your pastor grief. When I try to tell you something, amen, and you sit there in front of me like you listening to me and you got it all in your mind, and as soon as the meeting's over, as soon as the church doors are open, as soon as the discussion about it's over, amen, you walk out and do what you want to do anyway. Uh, yeah. Come on. Yeah. That's free amen. for my heart when I'm trying to help somebody, amen, they won't even pay me no attention, amen. And then you go out and you do what you want to do. You run out there in the world, amen. I done preached it and taught it, amen, and taught it and preached it. And you go out there and do it anyway. You make a mess of your life. I mean, you create hell in your life. Then you come back in here and say, I want to have a meeting with a pastor about this stuff. No! Right. Y'all don't know when to shout, laugh, and look. Amen. That's what I want to say. I can't say that, amen. But when you do all that stuff, I done told you in the first place, don't do it. And you come in and say, I got a meeting with no, I don't want to talk about it. That's going to bring up a cussing spirit in my soul, amen. Hey. I love y'all. You know I wouldn't do that. <laughs> what I'm trying to say to you, brothers and sisters, is listen to the authorities in your life. I ain't saying do what Brother Frankie said. I mean, you got to make up your mind, amen. But take some of that, what I'm saying from the Bible, amen, and store it away so when those times come, amen, right. you'll know what to do. That's yes. right. Yes. I want you to find out what God's will is for your life. Yeah. I want you to know. I want you to understand, amen. Yeah. Go to and listen to the authorities that's in your life. Let me keep moving. Number three. Look at Proverbs chapter number 11. Proverbs 11. Put it up there on the screen for me right quick so they can see it. The Proverbs, just jot it down. Verse number 14. And while you're there, jot this one down too. This one ain't going to be up there. If you take a note, jot this one down. Jot this one down. Proverbs 24 and 6. It says the same thing, but just in a different way. Amen. It says the same thing in Proverbs chapter 11 and verse number 14 says. Listen to what it says. Where there is no counsel, the people fall. But the multitude of counselors, but in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. Yes. Woo! Yes. Hey, that's a word right there. Amen. When there is no counsel, when you don't consult nobody, when you don't talk to nobody, amen, when you nobody can't tell you nothing, amen, you're doomed to fail, brothers and sisters. Amen. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. Woo! Go talk to somebody about it. Amen. Here's what I'm trying to tell you in this point right here. Get some godly counsel. Yeah. Yes. Get some godly counsel. Yes. Talk to a multitude of people about this thing. Amen. Who have done whatever it is that you're trying to do or what you want to do right now. Find somebody who might have been down that road already and went through these same things. Yeah. Find somebody else. Amen. Learn from the mistakes they made. Learn from what they would do differently the next time around. Learn what worked. Learn what didn't work. I mean, what they did. Before you jump out there and do it on your own, talk to somebody, amen, and find out without any discussion, amen. Find somebody who's already done it. Now look, uh, here it is. Find somebody, if you want to get married, find somebody who's already been married, amen, and ask him all about marriage. And oh, by the way, find somebody who's been successfully married. Amen. Don't talk to no haters, amen. Right. They'll lead you down the wrong path, amen. If you want a marriage to work, you talk to somebody that's made a marriage work, amen. amen. You talk to somebody that's jacked up and ain't care nothing about wanting to shoot their ex-boyfriend or wife, amen. amen. They're going to lead you down the wrong road, amen. <laughs> Whatever it is you want to do, amen, find somebody who's already been down that road. Amen. Y'all ain't got to say too much, amen. I ain't expect a whole lot of amens this morning because we live in this generation that wants to do everything their way. They want to do everything. And, and, and look, in your way, your way, it's going to mess up. And I'm not just saying that just to be saying that. I'm telling you from my experience, amen. I can tell you from a living testimony of my experience, your ways are going to mess up. Yep. They're going to mess up. I ain't got to say nothing, amen. 
I think you know better. I mean, y'all think you know way better than what I'm trying to say. Y'all smart, amen, because y'all already know everything. I know, I know, but let me talk to some, let, let me talk to some parents for a second. Anybody knows about, or anybody that's got grown kids, or you got teenagers in the house right now, every one of them, I think I can say this without anybody disagreeing with me, every one of them, every last one of them got to a place where my granny Cleveland used to say, they start smelling themselves. <laughs> so that's what she say. She said, oh, y'all start smelling yourself. And what she meant, when she said they start smelling themselves, amen, is they got to a place where they thought that they knew more than anybody else, including their parents knew. Have I got a witness? Amen. Smelling yourself. You think you know everything? You're you smelling yourself, amen. Have I got a witness? Because <laughs> the parents don't know. They old fogey. They don't know nothing. They ain't never done this. All of them. Look, they don't know what they're talking about. I mean, yeah, we don't know anything, do we? I don't know nothing. I don't know, look, look, we done played all the tricks you played, amen. We done did all that. We even invented some of that stuff, amen. Somebody don't help me talk right here. Look, we done been in the back seats on the back roads, amen. We done tried drugs. We done done all the drinking. We done done all that stuff. We done been there and done that, I mean. And we understand the lies that these teenagers try to tell us, amen. Look, I made up that lie 30 years ago, amen. I recognize that lie. I invented that lie, amen. We already been there and done that, amen. So listen to somebody that's got some authority in your life. Listen to them, amen. Yes. They're trying to save your life. Yeah. They're trying to save you. You want to know God's will for your life? Get some counsel. Get some good godly counsel. Amen. Let me keep moving. Amen. Let me give you another one. I'm almost finished. Go to Philippians chapter number four. Look over the neighbor. Amen. Say, you ain't going to like this one for real. <laughs> really ain't going to like this one. The Bible says in Philippians 4 19, but my God shall supply all your need. Amen. According to to his riches and glory. Woo. Hey. 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 I gotta say that again. My God, yeah. Woo. my God, shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Amen. Here's my next point. Y'all got the first three. Y'all staying with me? Number one was scripture. Number two was authorities. Number three was godly counsel. Number four is provision. Provision. Listen to me. This is another big one right here. I mean, I probably should have made this one number one, to be honest with you. Provision. It's what God's doing for us right now. Provision. The ways he's making for us. Amen. Right. You want to know God's will for your life? You're going to know it because of the provisions he makes for you. He will make things available for you. Yes. I need one more witness. Amen. I heard Amen. one. Amen. I said God will make things Amen. available for you. Amen. Got four then. Amen. Amen. But the problem is, the problem is this world, this generation... They don't think God can supply their needs. Yeah. Matter of fact, a bunch of them don't even think they need God to supply their needs. Amen. If I got a witness right here, they don't think God has the capacity to supply their needs. But I point right back, the Bible says, Whoo, God can supply what you need. Amen. According to his riches and glory. That's what the scripture says. Amen. He's rich enough to supply all you need. Amen. So whatever God wants you to do, whatever he wants you to have, wherever he wants you to go, he'll make you ain't got to worry about it. He's been an iron all wrinkles out. Look, I just put a crease in my sleeve in, in his word. Amen. He'll just iron it right out for you. When God wants to open that door, he makes the provisions. I said he makes the provisions. The provision is he opens the door. He already opened the door. The provision is he makes a way. As a matter of fact, he'll make a way when there's no way. Amen. I said he'll make a way when there ain't no way at all. Learn how to accept and acknowledge the provision that God has in your life. And I understand. I know this is rough. Some of this is rough preaching this morning, amen. And I know some of y'all don't like this this morning, amen. But I'm trying to save you. I'm trying to help you, amen. I'm trying to teach you some principles that's going to help you in life along the way. Yes. And some folks say, well, well, pastor, pastor, I ain't got what I wanted yet. How can I get it? I ain't got it yet. They ain't gave it to me. Well, God ain't got it yet. Thing is, Maybe you don't need what you think you need. Oh, I've run up against that wall. Sometimes God says, mm, you don't need that. Some things we think we need, amen, we really don't need. A matter of fact, brothers and sisters, yeah. this point is demonstrated all throughout Scripture. I mean, you can look all kinds of, I'll give you a couple of them. I mean, you can look all through the Bible, I mean, time and time, 
over and over and over again, God shows this, this, this certain point I'm trying to make. When Abraham was going up to sacrifice his son, Isaac, y'all know the story, amen? He carried him up into the mountains to sacrifice him. He done exactly what God said. And one of the ways, watch this, one of the ways that Abraham knew that God whew, didn't want him to sacrifice his son is over yonder in the thick. The provision. The provision was over in the thicket, amen? I need a Bible reader to help me right through here, amen? There was a ram. Whew. There was a ram stuck in the thicket, amen? Up in a place where a ram ain't supposed to be. Over yonder is a ram stuck in the thicket. Yeah. The provision, the provisions in your life, brothers and sisters. Yeah. And he took the ram and he sacrificed it. I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, those stories in there are there just to prove to you that God can supply the provisions for your life. Amen. He can do it, amen. amen? He can make the provisions. I mean, he can give you what you need in incredible ways that will blow your mind, amen? Just look what he's done for us. I mean, I look, you can look at the provisions he made for this church. You might as well say we were going to pay $175,000 for this building. So God just wrote us a check for $175,000. He gave us a building. Amen. Amen. That's provision for this church. That's provision. What he done. Amen. That's right. Whatever God wants you to do, whatever he wants us to do. Amen. When God gives the vision, he gives the provisions. Amen. That's right. When he tells you to do something, it's already finished if you follow him. Amen. You just got to be willing to look for it and get on board with what God has. That's right. You got to be willing. Woo, and this is a tough one. Not only willing, but you got to be willing to wait. Amen. Oh, we don't like to wait, amen. amen. But we got to wait for God to provide. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly what we've done right here. Yeah. We knew what was before us, but we kept pressing forward, waiting on God. To either send the money, and God said, I got something better, I'm going to give you a bill. Don't even That's worry about right. it, amen. amen. So, so Abraham. One of the ways that he knew God didn't want him to sacrifice his son is he looked over and he saw the ram in the bush. Genesis 22, read that when you get an opportunity. That's where it's at, amen. Write this one down too. This is another one of my probably top five favorites, and I've preached this text many, many, many times. Y'all gonna hear me preach it many times more. It's in 1 Kings chapter number 17. Read this when you get a chance. Jot that down. 1 Kings chapter number 17. It's the story about Elijah. And when Elijah, y'all, some of y'all know the story, he prophesied that there would be no rain in the land. It wasn't no rain. And it didn't, didn't rain after he prophesied for three and a half years. No rain. Think about that. For three and a half years, there was no rain. Y'all know how dry to get when we just go a month yeah. or two in the summertime. Oh, yeah. So there was no rain. So that meant even he needed a blessing from God. So God said, hey, this is what God told him. He said, there's a brook. I want you to go to the brook. And I'm going to sustain you in the brook. He was providing the provisions, amen. He didn't gave him the vision, amen. But he was already providing the vision, I mean, the, the provisions for what he told him to do. So he went to the brook, amen. And in the midst of a drought with no rain, amen, the Bible says he drank water from the brook. Woo, and I love this right here. I talk about this all the time, amen. God commanded a raven to bring him meat every day, amen, and feed him. Yeah. Somebody missed a shout, amen. Oh, yeah. Y'all should have got something right there. Here's the point about this. Here's the point, amen. A raven, if you look up a raven, you study a little bit about a raven. A raven is a scavenger. He's a scavenger. A raven kills or he finds some dead stuff and eats what's dead. He just takes it off just for himself. He's selfish, amen. But instead of him eating it himself, the raven, God commanded a raven to take what he found and bring it over to Elijah. And I've said this many, many, many times before, amen. I love it.